that upgrade. Hey, babe, let's take a flight. Yes. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Get that upgrade. Anywhere you are, though. That's what's up. Uh. Are you packing your bags? You already know. Get that upgrade. Make your best life. Oh, it's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late to make your best life. Oh, I wanna upgrade. I wanna upgrade. Let me get that upgrade. Make your best life. Biohack my life. Biohack your life. Biohack my life. Biohack your life. Biohack my life. Biohack your life. I know that's right. You can say that twice. I write the code. I'ma biohack my best life. Give me the, give me the upgrade. I spent enough days trying to figure out my way. No longer in the maze. Had to get out my way. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Biohack Your Sex Life. My name is Elizabeth, and I am Billy Carson, aka Forbidden Knowledge. Yes, and today we are going to be talking about. Some of the reasons why sex can, you know, ruin your relationships. Why, like, you know, some people just fall apart because of sex, you know? Because sex is such a, a, a big deal within a relationship. I mean, mm -hmm. can you honestly see yourself being with somebody, like, forever if your sex is bad with that person? Oof, that's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, um, I think that's the reason for a lot of cheating that goes on. I think mm -hmm. that um, sexual compatibility Mm -hmm. is extremely important in a long-term relationship. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to have that feeling like everything is great except for that one area, and then you start thinking about what could it be with this one? How could it be if I go over here and do it with this one when you can just stay in that one relationship? So I think that people are, you know, people that are compatible sexually mm -hmm. most likely to have longer relationships. So do you think... Um Okay, so what if you have the perfect person and they're just perfect in every other aspect yeah. but but sex? Like maybe, let's say, you know, we talked about this before on the first episode. Like mm -hmm. let's say that she may have a smell mm -hmm. or just, I mean, she may not be open to, you know, some of the things that you may like. Right. Could you see yourself like being with that person if they have all the other qualities? I think sometimes uh, it, it really depends on the person's consciousness. Mm -hmm. For me... I would probably be able to tough it out and mm -hmm. work, try to work through it, try to help that person understand what needs to be done. Yeah. But I guess it goes really for the same question for you. Like, what about guys with poor hygiene and and don't bathe good and they're you know they're smelly, <laughs> their testicles smell and so forth. You know, so you know it, it, it's a tough. Now for you guys, it got to be really tough. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just, I mean, for me personally, I, if if you have bad hygiene mm -hmm. as a dude. I just, I, that's like, that's that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's a deal breaker. I mean, yeah. because honestly, that just shows where your consciousness is at too. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you don't take priority in your own body, your own vessel, your own hygiene, especially your private parts, yeah. then what type of person and consciousness do you have? Right. You know? Right. I mean, it's if you tough. can't even take care of self. Exactly. You know, um, it's that old smelly locker room. You go in the locker room, you're like, mm. man, this is horrible. Mm. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of guys, they take for granted hygiene. And if you have, you know, for guys to understand better the importance of hygiene, if you have a brand new baby, right, you're with your woman, you guys just had a baby, mm -hmm. you're not going to change that baby's diaper and not wipe the baby with clean wipes, mm -hmm. wet wipes and clean that baby's parts really, really good before yeah. you put the next diaper on because your girl going to hit you over the head, man. That baby's going to get rashes and mm -hmm. and irritations and smell bad. Yeah, right. So if you're going to do that for a baby, yeah. why aren't you doing that for yourself? I know. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. Every guy should have wipes yep. in every bathroom. Yes. You should have, your, you know, of course, toilet paper, I hope. <laughs> I think I think we proved since what happened, everybody's got toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> but wipes. Yeah. Um, if you have a bidet, use that. Yeah. You know, and then also frequent showers. Clean yourself, especially after working out or hard work or a day's work. Make sure you clean yourself, you know. And I think a lot of guys, um, I think a lot of reasons for a lot of collapsed relationships are, are the hygiene, or at least maybe a woman stepping out and cheating because he could be a great provider. He could be taking care of the kids. He could be heavily involved in the kids' lives. He can be making sure that all the responsibilities of the house are taken care of, all the repairs are done, and everything else, mm -hmm. but just has that poor hygiene. 
And that can cause her to either say, you know what, I don't know how much longer I could take this or I'm going to go over here and get what I need, you know, yeah. somewhere else. I mean, it's just but see what people need to understand is that when you sweat, right, sweat is is the toxic burden that your body is carrying mm-hmm. being released out. That's a way for your yeah. body to detoxify. Yeah. So all that sweat that's accumulating in all of these places you know, that's just, that's toxicity, Mm -hmm. you know? So if you're not washing yourself off, like, I mean, that's just nasty. You were nasty. (laughs) You were nasty. I know that a lot of guys, you know, they they want to get the the oral sex. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know if they smell themselves. Get the oral sex. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's like, get the oral sex. (laughs) (laughs) Try to keep it, try to keep it as friendly as possible to anybody watching. (laughs) But, you know, I can only imagine a guy who doesn't wash properly and doesn't clean his butt properly, and then he wants to get, you know, all sex. And it's it's no wonder why probably half the time, you know, she says no. Mm-hmm. It's probably because, you know, you smell down there. It stinks. It's not washed properly, you know. So, um I mean, same thing for women. You know, it's the same thing for women. Oh, yeah. I mean, guys experience these issues. Like, if a Mm -hmm. woman's thing smells, you know, like, it's just, I mean, it's a turn off immediately for for a man. That's why I was asking you, like, could you see yourself being in a relationship with somebody that, like, smells like that? I would try to get them to change. And if they couldn't change, I'd have to leave. But I at least Mm -hmm. try initially. I'm like, hey, you know, you got to fix this problem. Yeah. If I really like this person, like if I if I somebody I just met or something like that, he'd be like, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the Michael Jackson moonwalk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if it's somebody that I had been with and, and I just thought that this person just has all the qualities, that's the only yeah. thing that's gotta be fixed. I would try to see yeah. if they'd be willing to adjust that. If they can't make that adjustment, then I, right. I wouldn't be able to do it. Right. Because I wouldn't want to have to be in a situation where I actually regret having sex. Every I'll be like, I gotta psych myself up to have sex. You know, that's that's not a good position to be in. Oh, man, and I think a lot suck. of people are in that position every single really? day. Really? There's a lot of people Psych out there in that position. They got to really like, like, oh, man, I got I to go home. I got to take care of this thing. I got to get myself in the right mindset to do this, you know. And I've been in that position before. That's why I know. So, wow. Yeah, I've had to, had to. And it doesn't work. It, it never works out well because the the energy transfer is, is sent. You can sense, like, that person can sense that you're not fully there there you're not fully into it you know right right because it's like you're just going through the motions i just out sometimes i would just go through the motions you know yeah. what i mean and uh just to get it over with it's like okay let me just go through the motions here it's let me just try to get out of part this part of life just to get it over with I oh know. my god i don't ever want to like be in that place in my life where yeah. i'm like man yeah i would just gotta get this over with right like, yeah, i know i know that's and just so, not a fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that problem made it easier for me to say you know what i gotta back out of this because it's not gonna change so um, it's tough, man. And I think a lot of people, I think it's a lot more common than people even know. Yeah. I think it's a lot more common. And, uh, I think that people, um, you know, need to figure out what it is that the toxicity that's in their body, what is causing that? Yeah. Now, well, you know, you know, women for women, like mm-hmm. specifically, you're not supposed to use soap down there. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not, so, any type of chemical or anything can throw off your pH balance. And mm-hmm. when your pH balance gets off, you know, yeah. you're going to automatically get some sort of infection mm-hmm. or some sort of stench. Yeah. You know, like something's going to be off. You're not supposed to use a whole bunch of products down mm-hmm. there. It's not good, especially especially these commercialized products, you know, yeah. like these vag washes. You don't know what's in there, mm-hmm. you know, like wow. and, and that's like such a, a, you know, sensitive place. And things will get go inside of you, you know, <laughs> so you have to be very, very, very choosy of what you use to cleanse yourself, you know, cleanse yourself. I don't. Right. I water, water. You're really not supposed to use anything. Mm. You're. It cleans itself. Yeah. It cleans itself. That's yeah. why we have, you know, periods every mm. month. Right. It cleans itself. It does mm. not need anything more. And if you have a stench, then something is going on internally. Mm. You know, for yeah. a woman, for right. a woman. Right. Right. For guys, a lot of it's just cleanliness. You know. Mm. I mean, it's, a study was done and it found that a lot of men don't even wash their legs, like scrub their legs or clean their legs. Mm. You know, mm. and I mean, I would, I can't believe people would even answer the question to that. But it just shows a study was done. A lot of guys don't wash their butt. They don't wash their legs, you know. And so um, the reason why, I really can't tell you. Because like I said, if you've ever taken care of a baby, you understand, like, it's important to be clean to prevent, you know, situations, rashes, 
uh, sensitive skin and so forth. I don't know why that doesn't translate into a lot of, you know, guys. I'm not saying it's all men, but there's a significant number out there, obviously, from a lot of the studies that have been done. You can look these studies up on Google. Mm-hmm. And so it shows that men need to be more, you know, more clean. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think one of the telltale signs, I think if, you know, if you're a woman and you go visit a guy at his house and you go to his bathroom and you don't see any wipes in there, more than likely he's going to have skid marks in his underwear. <laughs> 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 he's going to have skid marks, man. <laughs> There's no way to get around that, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going there today. <laughs> All right. Now. I'm just telling it like it is. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I. Yeah. I really. I. I agree with you. Actually. <laughs> yeah, but. Um. So what? What other things about about sex do you think that um may be a reason like that people relationships fail when it comes to to sex? I think um one person want to be. Uh, experiment or experience things. They finally got with somebody that they probably, they feel really close to that they can feel like they can open up to. Mm. And just between them two, they just sexually, they want, they have their own fantasies, but the other person just seems to not be able to fulfill them or not want to fulfill them. Mm. They don't want to venture out or experiment with Mm -hmm. the other person. Mm -hmm. And I think that can leave the person that was looking forward to somebody that they can open up to like that. I think it leaves them feeling a little um, hurt mm-hmm. and, you know, left out or ignored. Mm-hmm. There's their, their, you know, what they really want is yeah. being, um, you know, put to the side and mm-hmm. they're just feeling like probably, you know, maybe somebody else can do that for them. You yeah, know? that's when people step out. They yeah. probably feel ashamed because right. if someone were to, like, you know, come out and really, you know, be honest and, and, mm-hmm. and truthful with their partner and their partner yeah. just shoots them down. Right. I can't imagine if I was ever in that situation and yeah. you just shot me down. I'd be like, <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, it's, that could be, you know, and that could be tough. And I've and I've been in relationships before where I've suggested some things and she was like, no, no, you know, real quick. Like, I, damn, you didn't even think about it for one second, you know, but it wasn't even like anything really that out of the way. It wasn't even anything crazy. I was like, man, so this is what it's going to be like. So how do you deal with that within a relationship? Like, can you deal with that? It's tough when you want to try different things, different positions and things like that, and the person just wants one thing one way, and that satisfies them, and they're happy with it. It's like, hmm, this is really strange. <laughs> so do you, do you, do you, yeah. like, how do you, how do you, okay, so let me ask you personally. Yeah. So in that relationship, did you stay with that person? Like. I mean, no, I'm here now. I mean, like, stay, like, a, a long period of time. <laughs> I did try because I figured, you know, eventually, once I felt like maybe once she gets more comfortable, I can get her to to do more things. It started getting better a little bit. So I sort of maybe over more time, it might have, it might have, uh, gradually mm-hmm. i think it's a i think some people are mentally sex has been programmed to be exactly. this bad thing exactly. in our minds yeah. and this and doing different things that we call quote unquote freaky is uh is like considered like taboo mm-hmm. and so it takes a little bit of time to break people out of that i yep. think you know just have to be more comfortable and more open i think gradually as time goes by some people probably do become more open over time but um you know it's um it's an interesting thing but it definitely could be a cause for a lot of reasons for people to break up mm-hmm. you know one person wants to be more explorative sexually and the other person just wants the basic you know just give me the missionary type thing and we, you know and, and it's over with mm-hmm. uh and they're happy with that they actually feel satisfied um you know with that so it's just like one person's like you know wanting to do things and so they don't get you know too bored and the other person's like that's a big that could be a big problem mm-hmm. i also think you know even just little things like, you know, what they call pillow talk, you know, you know, talking freaky to your, you know, the person you're, you're, you're having sex with, your man or your woman and, um, you know, just whispering things in the air or telling them things or sending them, you know, text messages or whatever. Just letting them know that, you know, not only are you interested in them and you're thinking about them, but mm-hmm. also... I think dropping those little sexual nuggets throughout the day, you know, it helps keep that sexual attention between the two, that frequency right, together right. where people like that person really can't just wait to see you and, yeah, and talk yeah. to you. And it stimulates them mentally and physically, just right, a right. message or just a word. Uh-huh. And a lot of times I think people get away from that. They don't say anything. Right, and right. And so it's just like. 
Because it's been home. so taboo, you know? Yeah, yeah, I exactly. mean, people have been conditioned. <laughs> exactly. That is just so, that is yeah. wrong, to be yeah. honest. And that you're not supposed to explore and do different things and, yeah. and try different things, you know? Like all these freaky things mm-hmm. that people are doing. People, like, shun them. Right. It's been looked down upon, mm-hmm. which I think, we, it, you know, the whole narrative needs to, like, do a whole 180. A yeah. whole 180. Because... Yeah. I mean, people just are who they are. And who who knows what type of history anyone's had, mm-hmm. you know, any type of sexual traumas they may have had. Yeah. So it's like root issues can cause a person to be a certain way sexually. Mm-hmm. But you can get through things yeah. if you have open communication. Right. So, I mean, if, if that person that just wants to have missionary sex and they're happy with that, maybe they have a root trauma or mm-hmm. something that you know freaks them out about anything else yeah so i mean it's revisiting all of those issues mm-hmm. and just being open and honest with your partner yeah and knowing like you know you sometimes you got to meet in the middle like right, you right. have to meet in the middle when yeah. it comes to relationships it's work exactly you have to meet in the middle yeah. you know or else yeah. it's just <laughs> yeah, impossible I if i send work. a freaky message or a message you know letting somebody you know Dropping some little, you know, sex nuggets. I want to know that I'm going to get something back every now and then, too. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to be like, and I'm not talking about sending naked images. I'm talking about just, you know, messages like, hey, you know, I, I can't wait to see you so I can X, 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 you know, <laughs> or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And just, and and that, and see that person's excited to hear you say that. You know yeah. what I mean? That That's just, just that in itself. Yeah. Well, they did a study on um, on women mm-hmm. and um, what their like desires, you know, and it's and it's it came like the same all around the board. Mm. Women want to feel desired, yeah. you know, they want right. to feel desired. Same yeah. thing for guys, like True. like women. That's that's top priority, mm-hmm. you know. So as long as the woman feels sexy and desired, and you know, it's more of like an emotional type yeah. you know thing for a woman right, you know right. so as long as as, as that's there mm-hmm. then usually your woman's pretty happy you know yeah. so those little nuggets like that you may like you know mm-hmm. duh, 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 <laughs> that's great because it's yeah. making the woman feel desired you right. know like you want her i believe like you know uh, uh, what one of the things you have to be if you're if you're if yes you're a woman like you guys are in a, in a relationship and you're not her best cheerleader I think there's a problem with that. Right. You know? Yes. Like I'm Same gonna, thing for yeah. the for the woman and the man. True. Same thing. Same right. thing. Right. Like you gotta be the best supporter, the best cheerleader, because I guarantee you there's other guys out there right behind you not saying nothing, right behind <laughs> you not commenting, right behind you not saying how beautiful you are today. They're right there waiting to say it right behind you. And they're gonna say it. And they're yeah. saying it and they're getting that extra attention out there. Yeah. But you know, when you're giving it from home mm-hmm. in every way you can. And they're like, well, okay, they told me, but yeah, but my man told me too yeah, already yeah. three times today. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. they don't feel like a, a woman who's not getting any compliments from her man, and then all of a sudden she's out there in the street and all this attention's coming. Yeah. She's like, well, what's wrong with my man? Right. How come he ain't doing this see? and doing that? See, exactly. That's mm-hmm. a huge thing in relationships. Yeah. Huge thing because you're so right. Like, like that other person, and same same way reversed. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there's these women. They're they're waiting, just mm-hmm. waiting for mm-hmm. their opportunity. Right. You know, not yeah. even waiting. They're still in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're still in there. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, no, you have to be the number one cheerleader for your man or woman. Yeah. You have yeah. to be. And it's not that it's a competition. I think it just shows, like you say, it shows you have that desire. Mm-hmm. It shows that you're interested. You mm-hmm. know, it shows that hey, you know, here, look, I'm I'm all into you. You yeah. know, I'm all in. Mm-hmm. And I think once so once you can make your woman feel that i think that she just becomes a lot more open sexually and a lot more open consciously mm-hmm. to to you mm-hmm. um but when you're not man it, it can be that's a that's a, a recipe for cheating and everything else uh, uh, yeah it yeah. absolutely is it absolutely yeah. is i mean yeah, yeah yeah you just you know you have to make sure that the other person is fulfilled in all the ways that are important to them you know yeah. Absolutely. That's communication and just doing these little things, like you said. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I like to hear a little freaky message here sometimes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Hey, you already know. (laughs) (laughs) So what are some other things, like, like sexually, that you think may cause riffraff inside of a relationship? Um, That could cause a problem. Boy, there's so many little different things. But I think if... um, well, one of the obviously things, if a man can't satisfy his woman, you know, if he's all into her and everything else, but for whatever reason, he just can't, he can't, you know, stay, go the distance, you know, mm-hmm. he can't go the distance or he can go the distance at least one time, but he can't sustain multiple times, you know, mm-hmm. one round is his maximum that he can do. I think that 
you know, man, a lot of women, they really do love sex. I mean, contrary to proper belief out there, what they've been <laughs> taught by all the religious people and everything else, women love sex just as much as men, maybe even more. <laughs> and they can go. <laughs> they can go. And if you can't stay, if you can't keep up, man, I don't know. You got to really learn how to master that, you know? <laughs> I think a lot of guys just. <laughs> and he takes some horny goat weed. Yeah, horny goat weed, some ginseng. ginger, ginseng, <laughs> uh, whatever you know, uh, whatever you can find. Uh, uh, what they got? Uh, man, there's so many things you could take. Yeah, what are some what are some things that you could take for a man that that helps men? You know, uh, ashwagandha root yep. is mm-hmm. good. Um, of course, the ginseng and um, horny goat weed is amazing. Horny goat weed. Mm-hmm. Um, you can take. Um, Maca root, mm-hmm. that's good. You know, mm-hmm. those are probably the top right there. Those yeah. are probably the top. And just have a clean diet, you mm-hmm. know, try to eat uh, energetic foods and try to have a balanced diet, mm-hmm. you know, and don't try to overdo it on either side. Just try to have a balanced diet and exercise mm-hmm. and keep your testosterone up. The older you get, the more your testosterone drops, mm-hmm. you know. And so if your testosterone is dropping, that's also going to cause you problems in the bedroom. Right. And it starts happening now. As you, it used to be like in the 40s and 50s. Now it's happening to guys in their late 20s. No, I know. No, no. It's happening with children. Like they, they're growing up with hormones that are off balance because yeah. of the, you the know. microplastics exactly. and all this stuff. All and the all extra the, toxicity. The medicines. And so it's pretty tough. Yeah. 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 So one, one, one biohack I can give um, mm. is red light therapy for men, mm. especially, especially for men. It increases testosterone within guys yeah. and it will... Get your um your your it'll make you very hard because um it helps with circulation and blood flow mm-hmm. and nitric oxide so <clears throat> your your blood flow and everything like it's actually they've done research studies you guys can Google this you guys mm-hmm. can look it up there's yeah. multiple multiple studies yeah. that show that red light therapy increases increases testosterone in men and will make men harder right right so if you guys um you know have have yeah, I would just, I would recommend our device, a small little device yeah. for guys. If you have issues getting it up or mm-hmm. keeping it up and do 10 minutes a night, just balls and all yeah, yeah. <laughs> right in front of the red light right therapy. Right in front of the red light therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can put it in infrared mode mm-hmm. and, yep. you know, so you don't get burned. You don't right. get the, too much heat. Right. Unless you like the heat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, oh, they just did a study. They yeah. just did a study. Um, that UVB rays mm-hmm. actually increase um, hormone production in your body to make mm-hmm. you feel turned on. Wow. So, yeah. like, 20 minutes in the sun for mm-hmm. a man and for a woman a day mm-hmm. is necessary. Like, they, mm-hmm. they, they literally just proved this in, in a study. Yeah. Like, that it increases hor- hormone production of specific hormones that mm-hmm. increase sexual drive. So. Well, I live in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Man, that's incredible. That's good to know. Wow. No, no wonder. You remember? <laughs> I went through a whole thing. Mm-hmm. But that's because, no, it's, duh. Like, yeah. I'm very conscious about my body. So, yeah. like, I'm like, huh, this is making me feel a certain way. Right, right. Well, that's why. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> the sun, <laughs> yeah. the sun, with the sun had you ready. Yeah, it yeah. did. Yeah, you know. It's hey. ready to go. Flow rider. Um, <laughs> Flow rider. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what else? I mean, we don't have any of these issues. I'm so happy to announce. Uh, there's no issues. That's, listen, it's just getting better every day. You know? Incredible. But, you know, that goes along with another episode we have to do about mm-hmm. relationships and oh, finding yeah, yeah. the right person mm-hmm. yeah, that, that syncs up with you on the right frequency on every level. Right, right. It doesn't mean that you're, everyone's perfect and we're perfectly synced, but what it does mean is that we're on the same frequency and we have enough give and take mm-hmm. to make things work. Right, right. And, give uh, and take. That's yeah. it. That's mm-hmm. it. If people yeah. would stop being so rigid sexually mm-hmm. and they would start being more flowy and like, okay, well, maybe I'll try this. You right. know, stop being so rigid mm-hmm. about about your sex life. Like, yeah. oh, wait, I don't want to try that because, right. <laughs> no, like, yeah. you need to be more open. Like, especially if your partner wants to be open. Mm-hmm. YOLO, you only live once. Yeah, Why exactly. not try to experience everything? Right. Everything. I mean, this vessel was given to us it's a beautiful Mm -hmm. you know like like skin that we have yeah like why not experience all the feelings and all the things that you can that come along with it you know that's what that's what i think is important in this life oh definitely i agree (laughs) a thousand percent yeah and uh people just have to to reprogram the way they've been brought up Mm -hmm. 
even though they may not be even heavily religious, mm-hmm. but there's still that programming is inside of them. Yeah, that it's a shame. It's a shame. shame. Yes. It's like, a shame. oh, you're horny. That's shameful. Yeah. Oh, you want to have yeah. sex. Well, that's shameful. Right. And it's sad because, okay, like women growing up, you mm-hmm. know, oh, she's a slut. Mm-hmm. She's a whore. Yeah. You know how, how mentally exhausting and mm-hmm. how mentally just just that's so bad for yeah. a young woman right, to hear right. those type of things mm-hmm. you know it, it's just it's, it's crazy and it conditions people in a certain way yeah. you know and yeah. it really does and if a woman has been called a whore and a slut maybe mm-hmm. she got started early I don't know for whatever reason yeah. it is yeah. that is is affecting her on a conscious level daily that's mm-hmm. a trauma you it know is. that that it woman's is. gonna carry that that young girl's gonna carry yeah. we need to really really reshape how we speak upon each other, mm-hmm. you know, because you never know what type of trauma you could be causing that person exactly. for the rest of their life. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Like, that is so true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of the younger generation now, they've been taught that disconnected sex is okay. Dis- disconnected sex. Just, just you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm just, just here one nighter and we're over. I don't have to talk to you ever again. I don't, right. even, even, know, I don't even need to know your name. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the worst because, yeah. and everybody you have sex with, you take on that energy. Yes. You Absolutely. take on that energy. So everyone you've ever had sex with, unless, mm-hmm. thank God for Courtney, mm-hmm. you do, um, you know, you cut cords, you yeah. know, you, you, but it's a whole process. Like, at least for me, it's a whole process. Mm-hmm. You have to cut cords because mm-hmm. energetically you are tied. You're yes. tied to those people that you've had sex with. Yes. And that's just because your energies have been so intertwined. Right. You know? Your spiritual energy is eternal. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. on the energy grid. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's quantum entangled, literally. Right. And then when you take on their energy, you take mm-hmm. on their trauma too. Mm-hmm. So now, not only are you taking on the sexual energy, yeah. you're taking on all the other sexual partners that that person has had, yes. and all the other traumas that all those other people have had. Right. Right. So now your 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 body, you know, you energetically, you really have to take care of yourself when it yeah. comes to sex. Absolutely. Have to. Yeah, you have to. And so you start to build up all these different frequencies from all these different people in your body. Yeah. And then you're not realizing why you're feeling this way or feeling that way. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling depressed. Why am I having PTSD? Why am I having this Mm -hmm. issue, that issue? Why are these problems coming into my life? Right. It's the different energies that you've taken on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You haven't cleansed them. You haven't cleaned yourself of them. You just keep jumping from person to person Person to person. Person to person. And that's that's just not. And that's that's a great way, women, for you to get all type of infections. Not even like an STD. But anytime you have a new partner, your pH changes. So, I mean, if you're bouncing from from one to the other, your pH is all over the place, you know? And it's, it's... that can cause long-term effects, like mm-hmm. negative effects on women. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's just you have to be very conscious, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just, yeah, it is very, very open these days. Like, oh, yeah. just people, everybody smashing. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, I know, wild. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too much. It's, yeah. It's, well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to judge it because, you know, it, people do what they do, and yeah. it's their decision. But all right. I'm saying is you better cleanse cleanse your sexual energy. Yeah, you know? that's what you got to focus on, just Cut cleaning and, and cutting some cords. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting where you see this slight uh, shift in Enhanced consciousness, people becoming more aware of what's going on, but also in certain areas you see um, where things seem to be, I don't want to judge it, but just just seem to be a little bit more um, uh, in disarray. Hmm. And so I guess just as part of the human growth process anyway, Mm -hmm. you know, but I definitely would like to see more people trying to make conscious decisions as who they're going to have sex with, not just blindly having sex with them. I just pick this person up around the corner and just take it. In. There's so much that goes yeah. into that, too. Like, yeah. I mean, alcohol plays a huge role. Drugs play a huge role into yeah. all that, you know. Like, I'm sure many a days, you know, someone that has been extremely drunk, mm-hmm. you know, regrets the person they got with, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, right. it's all these things that go into that, that feed into that. Really, right. it's about raising consciousness as a whole, you mm-hmm. know, so you make better decisions. Yeah. So you're not out here sleeping with everybody because you got blackout drunk. Whoopsies, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, it's, right. it's about not doing those things because you're yeah. consciously there. And then the side effect of that is bringing children into this world that mm-hmm. yeah. weren't 
fully totally planned or at least thought of, thought of mm-hmm. and you're getting the taking on a you know a creating a child from an energy that maybe you don't even want to have in your life right and so now this child may be uh, you know not even able to see their mother or their father or listen, there's always a negativity in it listen so personal experience yeah. personally I can talk from this because mm. okay so stress hormones cross the placenta halfway through pregnancy right mm. so if your mom is stressed out and let's say okay ooh the mom she had a one night stand like mm-hmm. I didn't want to do this now I'm pregnant yeah. shit you know mm-hmm. so that baby is feeling all of those emotions mm. everything I literally did regression work and went back to my mother's womb and mm. could feel her stressed out wow like disgusted you know, so wow. I came and I've always wondered, why do I have abandonment issues? Mm-hmm. Why do I feel like no one loves me? Well, I came into the dimension yeah. as that. That was the first feeling that I, I caught, you know, wow. from my mom. Like, mm. oh, it's just bleeding into me. I had disgust. I yeah. don't want this baby. You know, can you imagine? So, I mean, not only epigenetics, mm-hmm. you know, that you already got to come in here and deal with past ancestral traumas. Right. But, you know, coming to this dimension and your mom's stressed out and she doesn't even want you. Yeah. And you can feel that as a baby. Mm-hmm. You know, that's your introduction to this third dimension. It's like, damn, yeah. like yeah. my mom doesn't even want me. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that causes e- extreme trauma, mm. extreme trauma yeah. for, for little babies. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can believe it. I can definitely believe mm-hmm. it. So, it, it, I mean, these decisions, you know, these decisions that, that we make as adults mm-hmm. affect others. Yeah. And we have to start thinking like that. It's not just us and our, our drive and what we want, you mm-hmm. know. There's a ripple effect, like the butterfly effect. Yeah. Everything that you do has a butterfly effect. That's and right. it And it ripples outward and it affects other people. Mm-hmm. So, like, why not try to make things more positive and make smarter conscious decisions so you're not bringing babies into this world all traumatized and, and jacked up. Right, right. You know, because you're just creating a life of, like, literally, my the first half of my life was awful. Hmm. Like, I hated it. Wow. It was really hard. <laughs> like, yeah. And that's, that's you know, it started from that specific trauma. Mm-hmm. And whatever happened with my mom and my dad and for whatever reason that it was like that, mm-hmm. I'm sure at, at their consciousness, they could have made a better decision, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's just you're, you're affecting down the line. Yeah, <clears throat> literally down the line because a lot of people haven't done a lot of the biohacking and the work that you've done on yourself. Yeah. So they then uh, grow up, and then they have a baby, and they pass all that negativity and energy into that next one, and exactly. it just keeps this cycle going exactly. over and over again yep. until somebody five generations later doesn't realize why they feel so bad and how come Generational they, curses. they're so angry and everything else. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. Generational curses. Yeah. That's how you cause that generational curses. It yeah. takes that person to break that chain, you mm-hmm. know? Like, if I didn't become conscious and yeah. start working and doing my shadow work, mm-hmm. clearing the traumas, you know? Yeah. I mean, I honestly, let's just be real. When I had my son, I wasn't fully conscious. Mm-hmm. I wasn't fully conscious, but yeah. it wasn't like I didn't want him. Mm-hmm. So I hope, I don't think that those, like, he felt those feelings. Yeah. But I wasn't completely all the way, you know? Mm-hmm. consciously here. Right. So, like, I could have raised him way better for the first couple years of his life. Mm. Way better. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is at this point. Every, yeah. You know, everybody has a story. Right, right. So, I mean, but it, it's just, you know, let's just be, be more aware. Because, like, kids, they take on everything. 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 <laughs> everything. Everything. They did a study that babies, right, the first thing that they can do is is... They all follow their mother's eyes. So mm. like they track. So so they come here and they mm. know yeah. that that's their mother. They don't they won't even do it with the father. Mm. They only follow their mother's eyes. So they wow. track wherever their mother's looking, you'll see the baby's eyes like mm-hmm. look where the mother is looking. Yeah. So they obviously know that's they you know coming into this dimension. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing like Yeah. They know that 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 must be important yep. for them to do, you know, naturally. Right. They suck up all everything. Like, you know how yeah. genius that is? Just for a little baby to know specifically, that's my mom, mm-hmm. and to know and only track her eyes. Mm-hmm. Other women can be in the room, and that baby won't track yeah. the eyes. Incredible. Only only the mothers. Incredible. So, I mean, these, like, little sponges. Yeah, they're Plus, sponges. It, it, I mean, you're programming the subconscious. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Until seven. Just... Yeah. Yes, but one Completely. to seven, you can literally get a. You can teach a kid so many different things. That's a whole other biohack yeah. show. Yeah, it yeah. is. We we need to teach people what they should be doing. Man, like learning all the languages. Yes. My son knew freaking um, sign language before he was one. Mm. He was a little baby talking about milk right. or whatever milk is. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like I mean, you can learn so much at that age. Yeah. Yeah. You literally absorb everything. 
Yeah, and you're yeah. so present. That's well, I mean, you're in theta. It's like you're always present. You're mm-hmm. always, always present. That's yes. why kids are usually so happy. You know, exactly. If they have happy environments. Right. You know, they're usually just so so happy because they're they're always present. It's like dream. You mm-hmm. know, they're they're stuck in a dream until yeah. age seven. And they're just downloading everything. I learned most of my Spanish before the age of seven. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. and so it was so easy. Yeah. A lot of that has stuck with me till this very day. Right, right. Yeah. No, that's what you should, you should train a kid before the age of seven mm-hmm. to be bilingual because yes. they'll pick it up like this. Be too easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, now, you know, if I try to go learn some Korean yeah. or something, dang it, uh, it would be so hard. Yeah, but, it's hard. You got to work at it now. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, that's because when a tree is a small sapling, the limbs are easy to bend. But once that tree gets deep rooted and grows, if you try to bend the limb, it'll snap. Right. Right. You yeah. said that the last time we were here. I did? Yeah, you did. Hey. Awaken from the trauma matrix. That's I remember. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're so true here. and it's so yeah. powerful. Yeah. It's a powerful, powerful thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is. It is. Because, you know, you get rigid in your belief. Mm-hmm. You get very, you know, stiff and just everything. Your process, the structure of your days. You know, people just fall into their own little, and that like... Bleeds into the, that bl- also bleeds into... What you've been programmed with about sex and mm-hmm. sex life mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So you become rigid, and right. then when you finally meet somebody that wants to explore with you, uh-huh. you're still you're rigid and you're afraid to break out of that mold. You think right. you're gonna snap and break, but actually you're gonna be, um, you know, you're gonna be freed. Uh huh. Right. It's gonna happen. Honestly, I really think it's about like just being completely, completely honest and being. Like, just don't be embarrassed, you know, like with your partner, like Mm -hmm. the freakiest thing that you could possibly probably think of, you know, probably isn't that bad, you know, so if you can (laughs) just, it's probably not that bad, (laughs) you know, because they've done research on this, you Mm -hmm. know, it really, I mean, people have like the same type of fantasies, Mm -hmm. you know, usually. So, I mean, if you can be just open and honest, Mm -hmm. then it should always work out, you know, if that other person is willing to sway a little bit or if you are yeah. willing to sway a little bit, yeah, you know. Yeah. Right, exactly. It'll always work out. Yeah, always. Absolutely. I mean, I think. I, I believe it. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So, guys, just, you know, have open communication. Yeah. Make sure you're your spouse's or your girlfriend's or boyfriend's best cheerleader mm-hmm. because it, that's important to give them that attention. Show attention. I don't care if it's... Yeah. I don't care if it's even like, you know, if you're if you're in another state or you're at work and you're thinking about her mm-hmm. and you can't get anything to her that instant, send her a picture of flowers. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, right. You know, just something. <laughs> Show like, hey, I'm thinking about you. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's All no these excuse. little things, they, they play so yeah. much of a role in the bedroom because if right. you bring resentment of any type of anything inside mm-hmm. the bedroom, then your sex life is not going to be good at all and regardless. Exactly. So you have to clear space between the two of you even like beforehand or beforehand. else it just won't won't work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys will have to want to desire one another mm-hmm. instead of being like, okay, I got to go to this now because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this guy don't even pay attention to me. He don't or she don't even pay attention to me. Right. And right. whatever, whatever. So, and also hygiene. Make sure you're clean. Make sure you're checking yourself. Make sure mm-hmm. that you're finding out, you know, where these smells are coming from. Guys, clean your butt, clean your balls, <laughs> clean your penis. <laughs> like, you know, wash your legs and your ass, you know, wash your feet, you know. Don't just, you know, splash some water on you and hop in <laughs> the shower. And, uh, you know, go buy some wipes, you know. And just take care of yourself better. And you'll see that your girl will be a lot more open and receptive to you when she realizes that you you have good hygiene. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That might be preventing her from doing some freaky stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah. Probably. And vice would... versa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Just talking about this is just like, <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> you okay, guys, we got to go. <laughs> we got to experiment with a couple of uh, things for the next episode. <laughs> put into action, right? Right. You got to put action behind the thoughts. Yeah. You know. That's yeah. How, that's how the universe works. So let's go. Let's go talk about all of our <laughs> freaky <laughs> fantasies so we yeah. can go experience those. Okay. <laughs> Until next time, guys. <laughs> we might, we won't share that episode with you guys though. <laughs> Dude, unless you want to know, it's like no. <laughs> unless you want to know, no. We can. I mean, we can give you some tips though. We can give you, you know. some tips. We can. Yeah. Yeah. They need okay. some tips from us. <laughs> <laughs> some tips. <Yeah. laughs> Let me stop. All right, we done. All right. <laughs>
We have an amazing investment opportunity here for anyone who wants to buy shares in Forbidden Knowledge. The money that's generated from this crowdfunding platform is going to be used to bring on a new content acquisitions partner. We're going to hire a new in-house graphics designer, a social media manager, a put together a customer service team and a customer service management program that will organize and satisfy all the different legs of Forbidden Knowledge Inc. As well as, and of course, make more improved high quality streaming content for the Forbidden Knowledge TV platform, which right now is featured on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, iOS and Android apps, and also of course, the web. The streaming platform is a year old right now and doing very, very well. And we're looking for your support where you can not only be a conscious customer, but also be a part owner in an amazing opportunity that includes streaming TV, book publishing, and e-commerce. Grow with us and earn with us. Forbidden Knowledge Inc. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.